Hello and welcome back to the Sim Hanger, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. In my earlier video, we had a look at the unboxing, software installation, and my very first impressions of the HP Reverb Pro. And today, well, it's time for the full review. In addition to trialing out the HP Reverb in X-Plane, prepared. And a quick look at DCS as well. We're also going to be doing a through the lens comparison side by side with HTC Vive. Don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications. Thank you. We're also going to be looking at the hardware at 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye. That's an awful lot of work for the GPU and the CPU to do. According to the HP website, the minimum recommended specification for the graphics card is a GTX 1080 or an AMD Radon WX200. I did a number of tests in DCS and X-Plane using the EVGA Founders Edition GTX 1080 and an i7-4770K processor running at standard clock speed. And we'll be discussing those results later on. All the tests that we're looking at today are done using an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. For our X-Plane and prepared flights today, we're going to be flying in and around Southampton, part of Orbix's True Earth Great Britain South. Let's get started. For our first test today, we're going to go to the Microsoft Cliff House, which is part of the Windows Mixed Reality setup. Now it's a great big white building and it's ideal for checking for screen door effect and for mirror because of the white high contrast walls. In terms of screen door effect, well, you've got to examine really closely. You've got to zoom right in in order to see anything and it's like a tiny texture. But as far as I'm concerned, to all intents and purposes, screen door effect with the reverb is not an issue. I did explain what mirror was in my last video and it is evident here, but not significant. I don't think it will ruin the experience. Welcome to Explains Virtual Hangar and it's a great place for us to test our controllers. There's been a lot of discussion about poor tracking for the Windows Mixed Reality controllers. I'm going to just hold them out of my view. Now both controllers are out of my view. Still there? Yep, still there. That seems fine. I'm going to put the controllers over my head. Way back and bring them forward. No problem at all. The tracking seems very good indeed, in fact. And for flight simulation, well, I think it's going to be more than adequate for those that want to use controllers. Let's have a quick look at the explain settings. These are the settings that I've set for the test. I should also mention under the Steam VR settings, I've set it to 132%, which is closest to the 2160 by 2160 resolution I'm looking for. We're now in the Cessna in X plane. I'm just looking across at that hangar. I can see there's a Coke machine by the looks of it over there. And I can just about read it. That's amazing. The gra I can read the gauges. What a massive improvement. I'm just leaning back, seeing if I can read them, which I can. I can't read the white writing there on the cockpit, but just about everything else I can make out. No problem at all. Once you're in the headset, you can't help but be amazed at the difference in terms of the graphics compared to my Vive. Well, I'm sure you don't want to hear me rabbit on about how good the graphics are when all you're seeing is what's on the screen. So let's have a look through the lens. I filmed these through the lens shots using an iPhone. To be fair to the Vive, I couldn't get as close to the lens as I could with the HP Reverb because of the shape and angle of the headset itself. 
so we need to bear that in mind. But if nothing else, it will give you a good idea of the difference in resolution between the first generation and the new HP Reverb second gen headset. In some shots you'll see an orangey light. Uh, please excuse that, that's due to my inexperience in filming through the lens and having an overhead light on. It's not within the headset. The screen door effect on the Vive was clearly evident, but on the HP Reverb, well, it just wasn't there. I can read the logos on the two FedEx aircraft. This new headset specification boasts a 114 degree field of view, which is slightly wider than the Vive's 110 degrees. But I have to be honest and say to you, I can't see the difference. In fact, because of the smaller lenses in the HP Reverb, arguably the field of view is slightly narrower. The Reverb's improved resolution allows you to pick up so much more detail in terms of scenery. You can see things that you wouldn't be able to see in the first generation headsets. It's going to make finding those difficult to spot airports so much easier to find. This is a big win for me in terms of level of immersion, which is one of the critical factors for me in flight simulation. I'm using the built-in headphones and I must say the sound is good, there's a depth to the sound. The reverb is running at 90 hertz, and it should be noted you do need a DP port 1.3 or above in order to run at 90 hertz. This headset is so much lighter than the Vive and therefore very very comfortable indeed. I'm not sure if it's because it's a different graphics engine in DCS World, but the difference in resolution seemed even more highlighted than it did in X-Plane between the Vive and the Reverb. The Reverb is not that far away now from monitor resolution. We're getting there. Since getting the headset I have done some night flying and I was very pleasantly surprised at how deep and how good the blacks are considering the HP Reverb has an LCD screen, so blacks are not a problem. There is no manual adjustment for the interpupillary distance or IPD, it's software based, although the Reverb claims to have a fairly large sweet spot. I put on the headset, I've got an IPD of just under 60, so fairly narrow, and I've had no problem nor any need to adjust it. According to the specs, it's got an IPD of 63 plus or minus 8 millimeter either way. So that will be something between 56 to 71. So if you've got a very narrow or a very wide IPD, I would strongly suggest a try before you buy. I tried out the controllers in DCS to see how they perform, bearing in mind the Rift S has 5 cameras and the Reverb only 2. And for simulation enthusiasts, I found no problem at all. Visually, the HP Reverb looks more like the original Oculus as opposed to the new Rift S, which looks more like a Windows Mixed Reality headset. For me, these improved graphics heighten the sense of speed and altitude. This headset's also going to be great for anybody into racing simulation. HP Reverb is made in-house by Hewlett-Packard and currently a time of recording is hard to find. Once again for prepared we're in and around Southampton in Orbix's True Earth Great Britain South. The prepared graphics settings were set uh, using the HP Reverb. Interestingly enough, the Vive struggled somewhat, whereas in the HP Reverb, no major problems at those settings. Perhaps because the headset is so light, but I was very conscious of the weight of the cable. Also, having the junction between the cable to the PC and the headset very close to the back of the headset 
is not the best design feature in my opinion. Whilst the headset is very comfortable, it does take a little bit of getting used to to make sure that the headset fits straight on your face. It's all about where you position the back straps. So with everything being said, what is my final conclusion? Well, the first asset test for me is, do I regret buying it? And no, I don't. The headset is a significant step up in resolution and resolution in terms of flight simulation while it's an integral and important part of the level of immersion and therefore enjoyment for me. It's a light and comfortable headset and tracking on the controllers for simulation, well, it's just fine in my opinion. Getting the headset set up is simple and straightforward. That said, it does have a few flaws. With the smaller lenses and no manual IPD adjustment, this could be a restricting factor for those with very narrow or very wide IPDs. We'll turn to hardware and discuss that in a minute. In terms of Mura, it was evident here and there very likely, but didn't ruin the experience. Let's talk about hardware. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I did a number of tests using a GTX 1080 graphics card in X-Plane and DCS, and the results well, it was a mixed bag. Whilst I'm sure the combination of the GTX 1080 and the Reverb headset is going to be a good combination for many games out in the market, in terms of X-Plane with Orbix True Earth Great Britain South installed, well, the GTX 1080 struggled. And I found I had to turn down both the number of world objects and visual effects by a further notch to the settings shown in this video. In DCS, well, slightly different story. At the standard VR settings, the GTX 1080 acquitted itself quite well with only a few micro pauses being evident. I didn't do the GTX 1080 comparison in prepared as on the other machine, I don't have a copy of prepared installed. If you're running a fairly vanilla version of X-Plane with not many add-ons and certainly no ortho scenery, then I think the GTX 1080 and the Reverb could work fairly well. But as soon as you start adding in scenery and photorealistic scenery in particular, that's when you're going to run into problems. The results that I'm reporting on today are obviously a direct combination of my hardware and software configuration. Different combinations will of course give different results. I've been asked a question, and yes, this is for you, David, whether or not the GTX 1070 graphics card is going to be good enough to run the Reverb headset for flight simulation. Well, based on the results that I've seen, it's not something that I could recommend unless one was willing to turn down the scenery, number of world objects considerably. And then that raises the question, if we've turned it back to almost a vanilla X-Plane, is it worth getting the benefit of the additional resolution? As flight simulation enthusiasts, we're all aware of how CPU bound both X-Plane and Prepared are. And we all know that the faster and the better CPU we have, the faster the performance. And to some degree, the same applies to using the HP Reverb headset. You need a fairly beefy CPU, and in particular, you need a fairly beefy graphics card. My personal recommendations would be as a minimum a GTX 1080 Ti, or preferably an RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti. Well, that's a wrap on the review of the HP Reverb from me. Once again, apologies for some of the suspect through the lens photography during this video, but we're learning as we go. I hope you found it useful and informative. Don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications. Thank you. See you soon. Bye for now.